Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. My name is Craig Jones. I'm the Executive Director of the Richmond Chamber of Commerce, and I would like to thank you for being part of our luncheon today. It's uh, a real honor to have the CEO of Port Metro Vancouver with us, Robin Sylvester, for his first speech uh, to our chamber. So, Robin, welcome to Richmond. It's not every day that I have the opportunity to speak to a Chamber of Commerce that's as proactive and as regionally aware as this one. So, and actually, I would like to just pause before I, before I go further and congratulate you on the award that you received recently from the Canadian Chamber of Commerce. Um, I understand you received a silver award for the report, The Economic Importance of the Fraser River, and that really is an outstanding achievement for a truly exceptional piece of work. Collectively, the Barad Inlet, the Fraser River and Delta Port form Canada's largest port, with 20% of all of Canada's goods trade passing through our operations. That's a dollar in five of all of the goods Canada trades. And it's a big deal for Richmond and for the Fraser River. Your own study correctly pointed out that the impact of the lower Fraser River port activity rivals the economic impact of the St. Lawrence Seaway. Richmond, with YVR and the network of warehousing and distribution centres here, is clearly an international trade hub. And it's easy to think of the port in an entirely commercial way. Jared already ran through some of the statistics. The port enables $184 billion of goods trade every year. $500 million of cargo moved through the port a day. That generates about 100,000 national jobs for the supply chain alone. 6.1 billion in wages, 9.7 billion in GDP. Before we even think about all of the upstream or downstream businesses that are enabled by that trade activity. In Richmond, port-related activities and businesses like distribution warehouses and transportation sustain more than 5,200 jobs just in this community, providing $260 million of wages every year and generating around $400 million in GDP. All of this connected to around 500 hectares of land here in Richmond and 1,500 hectares of port land across the Lower Mainland. Indeed, the Lower Mainland and the whole province of British Columbia have been shaped by the port. The result. Demand for trade with Canada is growing and showing no signs of slowing down. The global economy is forecast to grow in each of the next five years, starting with 3.7% growth next year. Understand, recognizing and understanding the implications of growth, from the impact on Canadian businesses, jobs, our quality of life, to how we build a port sustainably, all of this is integral to planning efficiently and effectively for the future. There are, of course, challenges to growth, though. And in my view, the biggest challenge facing us in this region is quite simply one question. How do we manage growth against the backdrop of conflicting interests, specifically with regard to a shortage of land? The ever-growing proximity of industrial activities in residential areas, increasing activism, all of this is leading to a challenge to growth. How do we plan for an increased trade demand and a growing population in a balanced, sustainable way? In Metro Vancouver alone, a million more people are expected to move here in the next 25 years. That's a lot of people needing jobs, goods, clothes, food, and not least a place to call home. We need this finite land to provide for us, to work, play, do business, and build our communities. And that's a lot for such a small amount of land to sustain. Something has to give, and it will, if we don't look forward. Unfortunately, right now, it seems that the something that's giving is industrial land, the lifeblood of our economy. Without a secure industrial land base, we simply can't compete for new investment and new jobs. Industrial land is where good jobs are nurtured and grow. It's critical to strengthening our place in the global economy. It houses billions of dollars of goods as they're transported to and from our shores and generates billions of dollars in tax revenues for government to support vital social programs that we all need and enjoy, ultimately creating shared prosperity. And there are benefits and results of collaboration through the environmental projects we undertake. We're currently reviewing two proposed projects to create stable, self-sustaining fish and wildlife habitat. One in Richmond, the McDonald Tidal Marsh Project on the North Arm, and the other in Delta. Both involve working with environmental experts, the government, the public, stakeholders, and First Nations. And there's been a lot of success with those projects, 
Also a lot of success with the local channel dredging program that the city contributed a lot to, along with the province, along with ourselves, and Delta for the channels within their jurisdiction. A program that directly supports the flood prevention measures outlined in your report. And I'm very pleased to say that we recently dredged the Stevenson Channel under this program, right up to the tall ship float, in collaboration with the city, and the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, and the province. And we're currently working with the city on trying to enable some further dredging, hopefully in combination with a habitat project. This is collaboration at work in your community here in Richmond. It's the economic importance of the Lower Fraser River in play on a very real down-to-earth basis. It's working together to balance the environment, communities and commerce. Canada, BC and Richmond have a bright future. I'm confident through all of the collaboration, dialogue, research, consultation that takes place, the right plan, the right projects and the right balance of people, planet and profit can be struck. Thank you, Mr. Gavin. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I hope you found that very informative. Um, Port Metro is an integral part of this community, uh, just like YVR is an integral part. Um, we are the gateway to Canada. Um, when goods arrive from abroad and they enter Canada, they enter it through Port Metro Vancouver, and a lot of those goods enter through our community of Richmond. Same thing when you land at YVR. Um, your landing, uh, your first step into Canada is on our great land here in Richmond.